Uh, welcome to another episode of our uh, brand new series uh, that we have been going through a number of Islamic arguments, countering those arguments, trying basically to refute those arguments, but at the same time offering uh, a lot of sources and tools uh, to counter them, sometimes even using Islam's own sources, sometimes from the Hadith tradition, sometimes from the biography of Muhammad, sometimes from writing outside of that by other prominent Muslims. Uh, we cover things like the um, claim uh, the Quran is preserved, for instance. Uh, we will be covering things related to the rapid growth of Islam. But today we are going to fo uh, focus on a specific uh, argument that has to do uh, with basically the idea that Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, performed miracles. Which I can tell you right now, as a, as a former Muslim who studied the Quran, um, usually um, the Quran is considered to be the only miracle for Muhammad. But with me here today to address this uh, particular uh, argument that is extremely interesting is uh, Dr. David Woods, who's been with me throughout these series. Mm -hmm. David, welcome. Well, uh, I've debated uh, many Muslims on whether Muhammad is a prophet, and uh, it's interesting, over and over again, Muslims keep bringing up the claim that Muhammad performed miracles. Um, and this is to show Jews and Christians that Muhammad is in the same line of prophets that we find in the Bible. So if we go to the Old Testament, we find uh, prophets like Moses performing miracles, like you know, parting the Red Sea. Um, if we go to the New Testament, we find Jesus performing miracles, we find the apostles performing miracles, and so on. And so this is to show that Muhammad is in the same line with uh, all of these guys. And if Muhammad did perform miracles, that, you know, that would be something that we would need to consider as evidence for Islam. And when we look at the Muslim sources, we find in the Sirah and in the Hadith, Muhammad performing miracles. We find him uh, shooting water out of his fingertips when his followers were thirsty. We, he could miraculously provide food for his followers. Right. Um, but we have to be somewhat skeptical of sources because of their dates, right? Muslims, Christians, we don't just believe things just because they're, they're written down somewhere, right? We have to consider the sources. Now, when we talk about these sources, the earliest source that talks about Muhammad's miracles is Ibn Asaq, Sirat Rasulullah. And that's written more than a century after the time of Muhammad. And that's a book that most Muslims I talk to don't even say they don't believe in. They say, don't, don't quote that book to us because I'm quoting things like the Satanic Simply Verses. Simply because and part like of it also were lost yeah. as well. And so they tell me, don't, don't quote that book. Okay. Uh, so what source do we go to to talk about Muhammad's miracles? Well, they say we have to go to Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Uh, but these, these were written two centuries after the time of Muhammad. So you're talking about two centuries to invent things. And we know that Muslims had very good reasons to invent stories. They're going around, they're interacting with Jews and Christians. And over and over and over again, Jews and Christians were asking the Muslims, what miracles did your prophet perform? Correct. And what did Muslims say? Well, at first they're saying the Quran. Look at this awesome, look at this awesome, miraculous Quran. And Jews and Christians did not take that seriously at all. Again, they have miracles like Moses parting the Red Sea, and then they have Muslims, look at this lovely Arabic script, right? What kind of miracle is that? So Christians and Jews were not impressed with this. And so by the time you get to Ibn Asak and uh, Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari and so on, suddenly you have all these miracle stories. So we have to be, we would have to be skeptical we would have to be skeptical already just by the late date right. of the sources, especially when Muslims had every reason to invent stories about Muhammad performing miracles. And don't forget, the entire reason for putting the Hadith into written collections was that there were so many false stories circulating about Muhammad, right? There were, there were I mean, Bukhari, the great Hadith collector Bukhari, had to go through, sifted through literally hundreds of thousands 600,000 of stories. He exactly. went through hundreds of thousands of stories to get to what he considered uh, the most reliable, the most authentic. Which is 7,000 only. Yeah, so, it, so most of it he regards as fabrication. So these stories grow up in an atmosphere where Muslims are, are inventing all kinds of false things about Muhammad in order to justify their positions. So this is the community 
that says, oh, and by the way, he performed miracles. We're, 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 we're making up stories, we're lying about all kinds of things, and Muhammad performed miracles. Very difficult to take that seriously. That's correct. That's but there's correct. an even bigger problem for Muslims, namely the Quran over and over again talks about Muhammad being uh, asked why he, didn't, why he couldn't perform miracles. And the response is never, what are you talking about? Muhammad's performing miracles all the time. What are you talking about? He's, uh, he's performing miracles all over the place. Let's look at what the Quran says. We'll go through several passages where people during Muhammad's time, this is how we know that Christians and, and Jews were challenging Muslims as the Muslims went out and preached, because even when Muhammad was preaching himself, people are constantly challenging him. Why can't you perform a miracle? Why can't you do anything miraculous that might make us believe in you? So let's read through some of the passages on what the Quran says about this. So chapter 6, verse 37 of the Quran, and they say, the unbelievers say, why has not a sign been sent down to him from his Lord? Say, surely Allah is able to send down a sign, but most of them do not know. Notice, why hasn't a sign been sent down? Well, Allah is able to. Well, we would all agree that, 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 that God can send signs. The question was, why, doesn't he, he send, why exactly. doesn't he send down one for Muhammad? Notice, if Muhammad had been performing miracles, and they ask, why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? The appropriate response would have been, what are you talking about? He just did a miracle last week. There were like 80 people who saw it, exactly. something like that. It will be reported. But over and over again, this is what we find. Let's look at Surah 10, verse 20. And they say, why is not a sign sent to him from his Lord? Say, the unseen is only for Allah. Therefore, wait. Uh, surely I too, with you, am of those who wait. So, why doesn't a sign come to Muhammad? Why doesn't Muhammad have a miracle? Because the, the unseen things are only for Allah. We don't know why he doesn't send a miracle. Again, if Muhammad had been performing miracles, why not? Oh, by the way, Muhammad performed miracles all the time. Why do you guys keep asking for miracles when he's, he's been performing so many? Surah 11, verse 12. Then it may be that you will give up part of what is revealed to you, and your breast will become straightened by it, because they say, Why has not a treasure been sent down upon him, or an angel come to him? You are only a warner, and Allah is custodian over all things. So why hasn't a miracle come down upon Muhammad? Because Muhammad is only a warner. Surah 13, verse 7. And those who disbelieve say, Why has not a sign been sent down upon him from his Lord? You are only a warner, and there is a guide for every people. Surah 13, verse 27. And those who disbelieve say, why is not a sign sent down upon him by his Lord? Say, surely Allah makes him who will go astray and guides to himself those who turn to him. Surah 17, verse 59. And nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs except that the ancients rejected them. And we gave to Samud the she-camel a manifest sign, but on her account they did injustice, and we do not send signs but to make men fear. Notice this part right here. It says, nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs except that the ancients rejected them. So why doesn't Muhammad have a miracle? Why doesn't Allah give a miracle to Muhammad? Because others rejected him. Others rejected them, so therefore Muhammad doesn't get one either. By the way, using this argument, I am a prophet. Yeah. And I'm not going to bring any signs to you because others have already rejected these Yeah, signs. other people rejected it. And so you're a prophet after Muhammad yeah. using the same reasoning. Absolutely. And therefore Islam is false because you're a prophet after Muhammad. All right, one more. Chapter 29, verses 50 to 51, And they say, Why are not signs sent down upon him from his Lord? Say, The signs are only with Allah, and I am only a plain warner. Is it not enough for them that we have revealed to you the book which is recited to them? Most surely there is mercy in this and a reminder for a people who believe. So here we have, Why are not signs sent down upon him? Signs are only with Allah. Muhammad is only a warner. And isn't the Quran enough? Isn't the Quran enough of That's a miracle correct. for you? That's correct. So, and notice the theme. I'm just a warner. Mm -hmm. I'm just a guide. I'm just a warner. That's it. Anyone can do this job, by the way, mm -hmm. to warn people. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, isn't I mean, following this reasoning, isn't every Muslim who preaches the Quran to us a, Is a, a warner? warner? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so over and over again in the Quran itself, people are challenging Muhammad. Jews are asking him, Christians are asking him, Muslims, I mean, uh, uh, unbelievers are asking him, polytheists are asking him, the idolaters are asking him, everyone's, why, why, why doesn't this guy have any miracles? And over and over again, I'm just a warner, I'm just a warner, I'm just a warner. Never, what are you talking about? Why do you guys keep asking the same question over and over again for years when I've been performing miracles all along as we find in the Hadith? Well, a couple things here. 
Muslims should realize they have to be skeptical, even about their most, most trusted collections now, right? Correct. So even stories, stories about Muhammad performing miracles in their most trusted sources of stories about Muhammad, those, those passed Bukhari's criterion for, 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 an, for an authentic narration. Uh, they passed uh, Imam Muslim's criteria for an authentic narration. And we know the stories are false because they contradict even the Quran. Even the Quran doesn't support these stories. That means your most trusted stories are in doubt. Even those were the best of the best, right? They go through hundreds of thousands to get down to the best, and even the most reliable uh, can't be seriously trusted. So, Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, and this is the only one, and the reasons for Allah not giving another miracle, apart from the Quran, is that other people had rejected them. Absolutely, brother. And it's, it's really baffling to me that Muslims will even want to argue about miracles using the Hadith. Why not the Quran? Mm -hmm. The Quran was around the time of Muhammad. Why didn't God reveal such a thing? And in a little bit, I'm going to show why I'm raising this mm -hmm. uh, basically objection to this silly argument by mm -hmm. using something that was written two centuries later. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Muslims, by the way, do try to take that approach. They, they try to argue that there are miracles in the Quran, but they, they, they're only interpreting these as miracles because they're interpreting them in the light of these later sources right. and That's not right. of what the Quran actually says. So we'll look at the two examples they have. Muslims have two examples that they pull from the Quran to show that Muhammad uh, did perform miracles according to the Quran. Now there's an obvious problem here. If in these verses, Muhammad is performing a miracle, then that would be yet another example of a contradiction in the Quran because all these other verses deny that Muhammad could perform miracles and the Quran is, is his miracle. That's correct. So, uh, but let's take uh, chapter 29 of the Quran, verses 50, I mean, oh, let's, uh, chapter 17, verse 1. Surah Al-Isra, yeah. Chapter 17, verse 1 of the Quran, this refers to Muhammad's night journey. Glory be to him who made his servant to go on a night from the sacred mosque to the remote mosque of which we have blessed the precincts so that we may show to him some of our signs surely he is the hearing the seeing so this muhammad going from going from mecca to jerusalem and this is supposedly an example of a miracle now the problem of course right off the bat is that aisha herself in ibn right. asak and other sources was asked about Muhammad's night journey, and she said he was in bed the entire time. So this is not Muhammad miraculously being taken away and him disappearing from Mecca and being taken uh, to Jerusalem and so on. Um, this is Muhammad getting some sort of vision, right? Some sort of vision. Correct. And if I may add also, uh, Dr. Wood, a miracle is intended for others to see it. Mm -hmm. So his own wife said he was asleep. But even let's assume uh, he left the room. Nobody saw this. Yeah. No one said, I saw something unusual, al-Burak. I saw the prophet fly in somehow. Yeah. I saw an angel. I heard voices. None of that. And that by, by itself is a problem. Number two, we know historically that the far mosque, the Dome of the Rock, wasn't built until 691. So this very verse is problematic anyway in terms of proving that the Quran was tampered with later. Mm -hmm. And And... So you, 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 you hit the nail right on the head there. Um, it makes no sense for someone to say, hey, I was taken on a journey. No one saw it, but I was trust me on this one, I was, I was taken on a journey. Um, so best case scenario, you could say, well, the Quran says it, but no one sees it. And right. so it's basically Muhammad saying that he went on a journey and oh, by the way, it's just some sort of vision. So this would be like me saying, hey, I had a dream or something like this. I had a dream and it's, you know, I was, I went away to some, some great place and stuff like this. Therefore, it's a, it's a miracle and I'm a prophet. Um, no, we're asking why don't we find miracles that could be confirmed? So notice, this just fits in with everything else. It's Muhammad is not doing any miracles that anyone can confirm. That's why they keep Correct. challenging him. Correct. And Allah says, well, you, people aren't going to believe it anyway, so I'm just not going to send and them. And like you said, Dr. Wood, this is a vision. This is not a miracle. Mm -hmm. Another, a more common one because we do find this one in the Hadith, and Muslims think that, the, that this passage of the Quran uh, supports it. But uh, chapter 54, verses one through two, the hour of judgment is nigh, and the moon is cleft asunder. 
But if they see a sign, they turn away and say, this is but transient magic. So uh, the moon is cleft asunder. There are stories in the Hadith about Muhammad going out and splitting the moon in half and the unbelievers see it and so on. And so this is, this is the miracle and it's right here in the Quran. Now, what's the problem? Well, if you read this passage, this doesn't say anything about Muhammad doing anything here. There's nothing about Muhammad. There's nothing about uh, Muhammad going out and uh, saying that this is his sign or something like this. This doesn't say anything about what went on here uh, or even, even that this is some past event. And so you can only conclude that this is talking about Muhammad miraculously doing anything by reading the Hadith and saying, oh, what the Hadith talk about here, this is referring back to this, rather than that story in the Hadith evolving out of this passage of the Quran. And even in um, Muslim commentaries, uh, we find that there are multiple interpretations of this verse which don't involve uh, Muhammad doing anything miraculous. So. This is Yusuf Ali's Quran, right? right. And he adds uh, three interpretations of here. He says that maybe they're all true. And he does believe that this refers to Muhammad uh, mm -hmm. miraculously splitting the moon. Um, but he notes three explanations are given and perhaps all three apply here. One, that the moon once appeared cleft asunder in the Valley of Mecca within sight of the, of the prophet, his companions and, and some unbelievers. Two, that the prophetic past tense indicates the future, the cleaving asunder of the moon being a sign of the judgment approaching. That's actually what it sounds like to me, that it's, it's referring to a, a future event. No, notice the hour. Apocalyptic event, exactly. Yeah, the, uh, the hour is near and the moon is cleft asunder, exactly. right? Um, so he acknowledges that that is, uh, so the prophetic past tense indicates the future, the cleaving asunder of the moon being a sign of the judgment approaching. And three, that the phrase is metaphorical, meaning that the matter has become clear as the moon. Um, now he believes based on people, um, people uh, if they see a sign, they turn away and say, uh, this is but transient magic. So this, the unbelievers are denying the miracle. But notice this right. does, it says, if they see a sign, if they see a sign, that fits in perfectly with the other passages of the Quran is people in the past didn't believe in it. So even if I showed you a sign, you're not going to believe it and so on. Correct. So if this, even if this were talking about Muhammad's time, it would be saying if they did see a miracle, they would still turn away. Right. Um, but as far as this sort of language here, you, you, you even find it in, in other passages uh, of the Quran. So I'll start off reading the beginning of, of Surah 75 here. Um, Allah says, I do call to witness the resurrection day and I do call to witness the self reproaching spirit. Does man think that we cannot assemble his bones? Nay, we are able to put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. But man wishes to do wrong even in the time in front of him. He questions when is the day of resurrection at length, when the sight is dazed and the moon is buried in darkness and the sun and moon are joined together. That day will man say, where is the refuge? Notice this, the moon is buried in darkness, the sun and moon are joined together. The Quran uses this kind of language over right. and over again. So when it's talking about the moon uh, being cleft asunder, and it says that this is a sign of the approaching judgment and so on, the judgment is, 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 ne is near, it sounds like it, that's, that's referring to apocalypse, not something that's happening during the time of Muhammad to confirm his prophethood. But I mean, at the end of the day, there's not one word about Muhammad doing anything. Or that's correct. It, 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 best case scenario for Muslims, According to the passage, you'd say people saw some event and didn't take heed about what they should believe about God and didn't take heed that the judgment is near or something like that. Nothing about anything happening here that would confirm Muhammad as a prophet. So when we read the Quran from beginning to end, there isn't one single word about Muhammad performing a miracle or Muhammad having anything to do with a miracle apart from the Quran. And we find over and over and over again, like a beating drum, Muhammad not being able to perform miracles and people constantly asking him why he couldn't perform miracles and the Quran making excuses, making all kinds of excuses for why Muhammad didn't perform miracles. And so um, if Muslims are, are, are basing their belief in Muhammad based on the idea that he performed these miracles that we find in the Hadiths, well, you really should read the Quran Muslims because Muhammad didn't do any of that according to the Quran.
And I want to add uh, to uh, what you just mentioned, and thank you for all this uh, detailed reference to uh, Quranic verses. It's an interesting because when it came to Muhammad, the Quran keeps insisting that he's just a warner. Mm -hmm. Yet the same Quran actually mentioned miracles that Moses mm -hmm. did, Jesus did. Let me just give you a funny example. You and I know that Muslims are quick to rush to Deuteronomy 18.18 and say, only Muhammad is a prophet like Moses. Yep. Well, here is the Quran's own admission that he is not. Very In different. chapter 28, verse 48, this is what it says. Yet when the truth come to them from ourselves, they said, why has he not been given the like of that Moses was given? Mm -hmm. Which is what? Signs. But they... Did they not disbelieve also in what Moses was given a a time? Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, just because the others rejected Moses' sign, I'm not going to give you any. Mm -hmm. This would have been a perfect opportunity for Muhammad to show that he is indeed a prophet like Moses. What about our Lord Jesus Christ? Even the Quran acknowledged that Jesus himself and his mother, both of them were a sign. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus himself also. Long, gave, long after, long after the ancients had been rejecting other miracles of other prophets. Exactly. And God still kept sending people miracles. Exactly. Why? Because the people who are there are different people from the ones who had rejected the miracles. And some people, many people did believe in Jesus because of his miracles, even though yeah. other ancient people uh, rejected miracles. Right. And I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. I'm going to pretend now I am this Muslim that heard you make this argument. I say, well, God usually sends prophets to specific times, and therefore the prophet will use miracles that are only applicable to their time. And yep. Muhammad used the Quran because poems and <laughs> basically, uh, uh, you know, the, the linguistic, uh, uh, you know, style of the Quran would have been the perfect counter uh, uh, effect for that. And you're not just making this up. We hear this from Muslims, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, hear, we hear this from Muslims. That's the miracle of the time. Well, guess what? If that's the miracle of the time, why do we read over and over again in the Quran people saying, why doesn't he have a sign? Why doesn't he have a sign? Why doesn't he give a miracle? Exactly. Why doesn't he give a miracle? This shows that the unbelievers, whether Jews or Christians or polytheists, didn't view this as a, as a miracle. And in fact, when we, when we look at the Muslim sources, uh, we find them, we find many of them ridiculing this, this idea that Muhammad's, Muhammad's revelations are what confirm uh, that, that he's a prophet. So history shows that people didn't take this argument very seriously. Yes, he apparently won some followers early on who were impressed um, by his revelations, but it, that's not how Muhammad won lots of followers, right? When he fled Mecca, he did not have many people. Uh, it was only later on when his message changed to join me, fight the unbelievers. If you die in battle, you, you go to paradise and get your virgins. If you survive, then you, you split up the war booty. We'll divide up the, the female slaves and all their property and so on. Um, that's when Muhammad started winning tons of followers. So as far as the people of his time, very few people found this argument in, impressive. Exactly. Well, thank you, brother, as always. Uh, we appreciate your efforts. Uh, can you uh, give our audience just a, a hint of uh, the next argument that we'll be addressing? Well, you mentioned earlier on the, the argument from rapid growth. So next time we could go over the argument that, the, that Islam must be true because it's growing so rapidly. Islam is the, the, the fastest spreading religion, so it must be the truth. Wonderful. Well, hopefully everyone is enjoying uh, this series. And uh, as I always uh, say, uh, I pray that if you are a Muslim who is watching this, that you would go and examine these sources that we've given you, all the references from the Quran and other uh, uh, sources like the Hadith or the biography of Muhammad and also the Bible as well. Uh, but if you are someone who is ministering among Muslims, we pray that this also will be a useful tool in your hand. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thank you.